Hey folks, this is my kitten raids. I'm Eleanor. Welcome back. And this is my February wrap up. I read 10 books in February, which is amazing for both for a regular month and particularly for a shortened month. Um, but yes, I read 10 books. Um, part of that was I was quite unwell for a lot of February because I had wisdom tooth surgery. So I did a lot of reading. Um, and this doesn't really actually include all of it. Like I got halfway through, for example, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire on the audiobook just in the first couple of days um, after I had the surgery because I couldn't even read. I had to just listen to stuff. Um, but yeah, I read a lot. Um, and so I will work my way through it. The first thing I read was uh, Eat the Sky, Drink the Ocean, which is an anthology that I had borrowed from the library. Um, and this is counting as a author of colour for me. Basically, it's a collaboration between half the authors are Australian but half the authors are Indian um, and two of the three editors are Indian as well so I think it was Kirsty Murray is the Australian editor and then there was Pale Dahl and Anita Roy I think were the other two editors um, don't ask me too much about the actual stories like I really quite enjoyed the book um, but my memory was not good that first couple of weeks <laughs> of February because yeah that's one of the main side effects I had from the medication that I was on but um I do did enjoy it um some of them were short stories some of them were actually like little graphic comics um and they were basically YA stories around the idea of of girls wanting more going beyond what is expected of them or you know that kind of thing but they were all science fiction fantasy horror kind of stories um, but they were really quite interesting so that was good then I did some rereading um, I've only got one of them here but I reread uh, the Livia Day novels um, the Tabitha, uh, Tabitha Darling mysteries um, the first one is, of course, A Truffle Dead, which I do have a physical copy of, but I lent it to a workmate ages ago and she hasn't read it yet. Um, so I actually ended up buying the ebook to so that, so that I could reread it. And this is the second one, Drowned Vanilla. So these are published by 12th Planet Press and they are set in Hobart. They are mystery novels. Um, Tabitha Darling, her father was the chief of police in, in Tasmania for a very long time. Um, so she's surrounded by police officers, even though her father has passed away. Um, but she loves to cook. She loves fashion. She loves vintage stuff. And so she runs a cafe. And then in the first book, A Trifle Dead, there's a body discovered upstairs from her cafe. And she can't help but get drawn into um, the mystery. And the same in Drown Villa. She, she's saying in Drown Villa, I'm not going to get involved in any more, you know, d detective work. She gets involved in more detective work. She just can't help it. Um, but they're hilarious. I giggle my way through them every time I read them. And I really recommend the uh, Café La Femme series by Olivia Day. Um, after that, I actually went into a bit of a non-fiction mood. And so I finally picked up Reckoning by Magda Zabansky. Um... Australians will recognise Magda Sabansky. She's a comedian and actress. Um, has played many very well-loved characters in Australia. She's probably best known internationally for her role in Babe, the movie about the pig. Um, but yeah, this is she's written this memoir, which is her life, but also very much her life entwined with wanting to know about her father's life. Um, if I read the very first sentence... Um, of the book if you had met my father you would never not for an instant have thought he was an assassin basically so it's Magda's life growing up very early on in the UK but then in Australia once they moved to Australia um, with a father who was a member of the Polish resistance in World War II and was part of their death squad basically in the fight against um, traitors and all that kind of thing um, and people that help the Nazis um, so a lot of it is her dealing with that there's also a lot in here about her sexuality because um, Magda Zabanski is actually lesbian 
basically. Um, not quite fully lesbian. She kind of says she's sort of gay, 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 straight, gay, 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 kind of. Um, so, you know, she's experimented, but um, she, she had a very uncomfortable relationship with her sexuality for a very long time. And so there's a lot in here about that. So this is actually my uh, book with a queer protagonist because, of course, it's about Magda. So um, it's counting as a queer protagonist for me. But this was a really, it's an award-winning memoir in Australia. Like, you can see all the stickers. It's won a lot of awards in Australia. And I really, really enjoyed this. This was really, really good. A really, really good read. So, um, yeah. And then I continued on my uh, way with um, nonfiction. And I read this, which is Stan Grant's Talking to My Country. So Stan Grant is an Australian journalist and he is an Indigenous Australian man. He is Aboriginal. He is, um, he's a, forgive me if I've been able to pronounce this, but a Wiradjuri man. Um, and he can he was a journalist internationally for a very long time, um, with CNN, um, but he's now back in Australia and he has become a very outspoken voice in sort of politics and journalism in Australia. And um, this is a book that he wrote in, I think it was 2016, um, after an essay that he wrote for the quarterly um, about uh, Adam Goods, who is the AFL, Australian Rules football player, who is, you know, he's one of my favorite players, he's retired now, but you know, he's a great player who had won two best and fairest medal for the league and then started to get booed. And there's no hiding away from the fact that the booing he was getting was racist booing. Um, and it was an appalling sort of situation. And Stan Grant's commentary um, about that situation has led to a lot of high profile stuff and has led to this book, which is part memoir. It's actually, it's mostly memoir, um, but it's, it's exploring the very difficult relationship that Aboriginal and Torres Strait Island um, no, peoples have with Australia, with modern Australia, with the, the history of white settlement, with the trauma that is now generational, um, and the effect that that can have on even the most well-educated, wealthiest of um, Indigenous Australians, and it's still traumatic. And this was a very difficult read. I didn't cry because it was almost too overwhelmingly emotional to even actually express emotions um but it's a really good book and i really recommend it if you want to get an insight into um aboriginal and Torres Strait island australian politics and thought and the damage that's been done over the last sort of 200 over 200 years um 250 years maybe um yeah i really it says the book that every Australian should read, and yeah, I, I would agree with that. So um, I really, really recommend this book. Um, the next thing that I read, and actually, technically I read in between those two, um, was finishing off issue 16 of Uncanny Magazine, um, edited by Lynn M. Thomas and Michael Damien Thomas. Um, it was a really good issue, actually. I really enjoyed it, particularly the nonfiction. Unfortunately, I can't really tell you what the stories were about because, again, my memory in February not been great. When I say my memory not been great, I have no memory of speaking to my grandmother after my surgery, a couple of days after my surgery, but apparently I did. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, I can't actually pull out any individual stories for that issue, but I do remember really, really enjoying that issue. So that's issue 16 of Uncanny Magazine. And then I went back to sort of fiction as well. I read, not this whole thing, but I read A Wizard of Earthsea, which is the first book in the Earthsea stories um, by Ursula K. Le Guin, because of course, unfortunately for all of us science fiction and fantasy people, Ursula K. Le Guin passed away in February. Um, so Galactic Suburbia, the podcast that you've probably heard me talk about before, they decided to run a bit of a Facebook uh, book club for A Wizard of Earthsea because a lot of people wanted to reread it. A lot of people like me had never read it before. Um, unfortunately, the quartet was the only actual volume that I could get my hands on. Um, but yeah, it was really good actually. I think 
I think if I'd read this as a kid and we had it as a kid, but for some reason I just refused to read it, I would have really liked it. Um, it's a fantasy story. It's about this wizard called Ged, also known as Sparrowhawk, and um, him. It's it's about him learning to be a wizard, um, but not as in depth as say a Harry Potter school for wizards thing. Um, learning to be a wizard, the mistakes that he made, some of the deeds that he does early on in his career, and having to come face to face with that original mistake that he made. Um, and it's very much about about knowing yourself and the power that comes from both knowing yourself and knowing the truth of other things. Um, so a lot of magic done in this particular world is done by using the true name of whatever you're trying to magic. So um, that is A Wizard of Earthsea by Ursula K. Le Guin. And then I went on a rather tomorrow Pierce freak out at the end of February and now into March. Um, the brand new uh, novel has come out. I've only read three chapters of it so far, so it's not included in this video. But before I picked that up, I picked up this, which came out last year, which is Total A Spies Guide by Tamara Pierce. And also with uh, Julie Holderman, Timothy Lieb and Megan Messenger. And it's basically, it's done in, as a style, in the style of a whole bunch of documents. And basically it starts with a letter from Alana, who is of course Tamara's first character, Alana the Lioness, to her husband George, which has a bit of a bombshell in it on the first page. Um, seriously, I went, oh, okay. I uh, wasn't expecting that. Anyway, this triggers George to try and clean out the room next to his office, which is just full of crates of documents that are completely disorganized. And so these are a whole bunch of documents um, that the spy master of Tortal has and he's sorting out and their notes, their notations, and some of them are files, some of them are letters, some of them are drafts of like a guide to spycraft, um, you know, all sorts of different documents um, from all sorts of eras of, of the Tortal universe. So you find stuff about characters we know and love, you find out stuff about minor characters who barely turn up. Um, and then at the back, there's apparently a long promised timeline of the Totalan universe. So that's going to be really helpful, I think, particularly now that she's been going back and doing um, like prequels kind of thing, like the Beck Cooper books and the new series, which is the uh, New Mare series. Um, so the first book here, that is Tempest and Slaughter, which you'll hear about more once I actually finish the book. But the thing about this, is that it put me in such a tomorrow pierce mode and I was so tired at the end of the month that I decided to do a lot of rereading as well. So the first two books and the last two books that I read in February that I reread are the first two Becky Cooper books. So Terrier and Bloodhound. I didn't pick up Mastiff because I was too tired to deal with the emotional tone of Mastiff and so I've actually gone to something else which is also tomorrow pierce. But these are the first two of the Becky Cooper trilogy. This is the sort of 200 years beforehand, kind of before Alana. And Becky Cooper is one of George Cooper's ancestresses. And she was a dog. So in this particular verse, um, back in the past, the dogs were basically the police force um, in this sort of medieval universe. Um, and Becca, she's from a poor family who lived in the slums. Um, but they got out of the slums because um, her mother's boyfriend treated her badly and so Becca basically dogged, which basically meant investigated and followed um, this guy until she found out where he and his gang were meeting up and then she tried to get someone to help her and eventually had to go up to the Lord Provost, Lord Gershom. Um, and so as a reward, he took her family into his household. Um, and now Becca in Terrier, she's a puppy. She's made it through training and now she's a puppy. So this is the on the job training where she works with, a, with an established team and she gets given the best of the established teams, but working in the lower city, which is where she now lives again and where she wants to work. So, you know, we're in the area where it's not like the best pain part of being a dog, but it's the area that she knows and it's the area where she thinks she can do the most good. 
So the first story is Becca's first few months as a puppy and the investigation that she gets her teeth into um, living in the lower city. The second one, Bloodhound, uh, she's now a first year dog. Um, she can't seem to hold a partner because she's too too much for most of them. Um, <laughs> because she's Becca. And um, yeah, and so then she goes back to her training dogs. Uh, one of them gets injured. And so then she and uh, Clary Goodwin, one of her training gods, have to training dogs, sorry, have to go on an investigation um, to a different city. So um, Becca also has magic. Um, it's not the usual magic. Basically, she can hear the ghosts that ride pigeons and talk to them. Um, so she can get information that way. And she can also hear the voices caught in the dust spinners, in the winds and the breezes that are in dust spinners. And so she gets information that way as well and has to piece it all together. And of course, she has a companion, which is a black, purple-eyed cat we all know very well, just this time by a different name. Yeah. So, on a Tomorrow P.S. kick at the moment, and those are the 10 books that I read in February. So I was quite pleased that only uh, four of them were rereads, so six of them were new to me. Um, I had two authors of colour, so basically the anthology and Stan Grant. I had a queer protagonist, I had a memoir, which is also on my list of things, two memoirs, pretty much, which is also on my list of things to do this year, and a, an anthology and a short fiction magazine, which is also on my list of things to do. So I'm on track with my Goodreads challenge, um, I'm on track with all my other challenges, I believe. So really good reading month. Really good reading month. So um, yeah, that was it. I'll see you all again really soon. Bye.